So don't complain on Twitter or Facebook. They're all doing a bloody good job. There's a new a new GM, Warren. Warren, hello, Warren, say hello. The tall bloke. Uh, and Roxanne, suddenly at the door, said, I'm gonna help you. So she was vicious and she made sure you're paid, which is great. And one of the reasons you're paid is because Andrew said to me, I want to give 10% to room to read, right? So 10% of what you paid is going to room to read, right? Why? Why? Uh, uh, room to read mainly because they uh, do sponsorships uh, for girls' education. So it's a subject near and dear to my heart as I have two daughters. Nice. Anybody else in this room got daughters? A resounding no. That's fine. I've got one. It's not that bad. So I also want to thank uh, Ron. Oh yeah, Ron, Lee. These two guys uh, take what we say tonight and they turn it into a podcast. And you can see it, see us on SoundCloud if you go on there. Does anybody, does anybody use SoundCloud? Get on there before Spotify buys them. Because then they'll destroy them. SoundCloud is actually quite a good app. And uh, Ron and Lee run this company called Radio Chinwag, which teaches teenagers swear words. Have you know what it does? Something like that. Proper words. How to speak English in it. So, let's get started. I, it was fascinating for me because I've done 103 of these and when you put a brand name like HSBC and you send out an invite, it's stunning to see what comes back. I can't believe the amount of people who came back to me and complained to me like I was the HSBC customer service. <laughs> Fucking tell them that, you know, the ATM machine screwed. Oh, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so I'm not customer service at HSBC, just in case you wanted to know. And nor is, nor is the gentleman next to me. So if you want to complain, there's a little room in this corner there. And apparently something going on in there, but you can go and complain. So I just want to make it clear. Uh, Andrew is very new to HSBC. He has got fuck all to do with the past of HSBC. He is there to look at the future of HSBC. So I'm going to open the mic later for you to ask questions. I recommend that you talk about how things could be improved, rather than why is the ATM machine in Quarry not working anymore. But so, uh, and, and Andrew uh, comes from our world. Andrew, when I first met him, was sitting in a tiny little room in Shenguan, trying to tell people what search engine marketing is. How long ago was that? Eight years ago. So eight years ago, if you said the word SEM in Hong Kong, they wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about, right? 
Very good. Thank you so much. Is that loud enough for you all hearing? Is that better? Oh. Hello? Yes. You want to hear him, not me, yeah. So, uh, and then Andrew was COO of Strawberry Net. Who in this room has bought from Strawberry Net? Woo! Yeah, one person knows how to get good deals on makeup, yeah. Not Sasek. So, Andrew uh, was recruited into HSBC recently, and we've known each other for a while. And I thought, this is a perfect time to talk about finance in this town. Because, as you may know, the government has suddenly woken up and gone, Ooh, we've got FinTech. So is Charles here? Charles? Invest HK, are you here? No, he's too busy. So Invest HK has just broken off a new uh, group called about uh, FinTech. So Charles, who used to work for Ace Securities, is running that. Um, the HKMA has got this very funky new sandbox. Does anybody know what it's called? Yeah, of course. Huh? It's got a very funky name. Can you think of it? Do you know what it's called? I'll buy you a beer if you can tell me what it's called without looking on Google now. Fintech Sandbox? No. Do I have more? The Hub? The Hub? No. Government Supervisory Sandbox. Who said that? You toss that. <laughs> What's it called? Oh, you're a no, it's not called Supervisor. It's called FinTech Supervisor. So nobody gets to hear that. Otherwise known as FSS. You know, in Hong Kong, we like our acronyms. So, a lot's happening in this town, and this town's got FinTech accelerators falling out of the trees. Uh, Accenture has one. What's it called? FinTech Innovation Center. Okay, FinTech's got one. AIA's got one. Who else has got one? DBS has got something going, right? Yeah, so the guys at Meta are one of those. Yes. So if you want to learn how to commercialize accelerators, talk to Meta. Or, or Simon Squibb Enterprises. So we're going to talk tonight with Andrew, and so you've got the background there. Um, so my first question, actually, I had it, I wrote it down. I have so many. Um, oh yeah, one other thing I want to warn you is that Andrew runs desert marathons. So he knows how to be in there for the long run. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how does a big company transform itself, right? Because I think uh, we're seeing now in this town a lot of companies trying to innovate and transform, and it needs guys and girls who can run desert marathons. So I want to know. You're working in a large corporation, right? This town is full of promising startups. Is HSBC going to fight them off, or are you going to shrivel up and go back to London? <laughs> you personally. Not personally no. So is HSBC going to shrivel up and go back to London? No. Um, so how are we going to do the big transformation? So publicly, we've committed. Um, 1.7 billion US dollars um, to transformation. Um, digital gets 1.2 billion dollars. That's not just Hong Kong, that's global. Um, so the first thing you need to transform a large organization is cash. Um, the reason to do that um, initially was how do we take, how do we get a cost base that at the end of 2018 it was, it was the same as the end of 2014. And this was a publicly made statement to the to shareholders. Um, my view on that, and how we should really be thinking about that, is taking cost out of the business is one thing. You can do that, but you can also leave the customer experience as a load. So as we go into the business, um, the conversation we've been trying to have, the narrative that people were bringing in from outside of something is not how do you just focus on the process, it's not how do you just go straight through, it's how do you deliver better customer experiences faster. Because if you frame the question first, so if the question is, how do we deliver a credit card to a customer in under five minutes, you have to solve the back end problems as well, but you start at the front end with the customer So the first bit is having the financial support to do this. The second part is bringing in the people who understand how to do this as well. So 
capacity can we do this um, from a people point of view? So we're bringing in a lot of um, external people, people outside of banking, and um, we can help the bank think differently um, about how they want to deliver consumer tech type services to, to our customers. Is $1.2 million a lot, a billion, for a bank? I mean, are that, as it compared to other other organizations that finance transfer funds? Uh, so, I think $1.2 billion is a lot of money. Um, not if you're in Silicon Valley, it's like one of the genuine challenges. On the one hand, you could say that, that it is a huge sum of money, and, and it is, by any stretch of imagination, getting $1.2 billion commitment is, is quite an achievement. On the other, if we looked at what we, what the bank or banking networks would traditionally invest in um, a branch, for example, in a branch network, it's still a multiple of that. The, the, the good thing for us is even if we fail in achieving everything that we want to do, that $1.2 billion is going to get us a huge amount of the way there. So if we think about the value that we can unlock um, by delivering these better customer journeys and better customer service, um, $1.2 billion is a great start and it helped build the case um, to get more. So it's closely that. linked to better customers, customer journeys, right? Kind of. On the one hand, you have to take out the cost, that's what they gave yeah. us the money for. On the other hand, if we just did that, then we're not going to have any customers. So you didn't really answer my question. How's HSBC going to beat the crap out of all these startups like WeLabs and, you know, some of our cousins across the border in Shenzhen, like Tencent? Is, is uh, you don't have to use my phrase, but, uh, but um, I'm just wondering, you know, in, in the world we live in, there's incumbents, yeah. then there's startups, and then there's the media who flare up the startups. But the question is, you know, we see a lot of little promising companies doing peer-to-peer -peer lending, better ways of like Alibaba putting money into a fund to make it easy through your mobile, transferring money. So how, how's, how's a big organization going to come in and say, no, I've known you for years, I'm going to help you do this better? There's a number of ways to think about this. So, if we look at actually what's happening um, within the startup community here, our view at the moment, and this is largely my view, I don't have a, a very clear picture of this yet, is that the majority of the startups that we see are actually potential collaborators for us. Because the regulatory barrier that they need to cross is substantial. So, even with the new, all right, Paul, what's it called? The things like sandbox, <laughs> supervisory sandbox. It sounds like a, that was a only kindergarten with a math was, teacher. That was still only for authorised financial institutions. Yeah. Right? So, uh, so not for startups. It's harder for them to do that. Oh, okay. So, so, so a lot of what we see, if you look at reg tech, if you look at compliance. Sorry, what's reg tech? Regulation like technology. Technology. So, so, the cost of actually onboarding a customer into HSBC is substantial. So, can you tell us how much it is? No. <laughs> is it like a hundred dollars? Two hundred? Five hundred? Just saying numbers isn't going to make any sense. <laughs> I want to see that wink in your eye. <laughs> so, so the regulator is looking for ways to actually reduce the overall costs of managing that regulation. We're looking at ways to, the over, to reduce and make it easier for customers to get on board. So the best thing that we could do would be able to enable a customer to open accounts entirely online. That's, that's where we need to be, and we need to solve quite a lot of problems. So, so that's the initial landscape. What we see is potential for partnerships and within the startup community. And, the community. and are you going out and engaging them? When we're you say partnerships, we're, are, we're, you, are you starting? Be, we are beginning to. Is everybody in this room a promising fintech startup model? Anybody else? Oh, Paul? Paul, I like Paul. What do you do? Andrew knows Pass Kit. Pass Kit, yeah. Anybody else here doing anything to do with finance or customer experience? No? What? Who, who's that? Paul. Another Paul. Yeah, he's got a good idea. Just talk to him later. Anybody else? No? All right. Yeah. So, so actually one thing we need to fix first is um, our own internal processes for how we would work with something. Because if you're a startup and you've got a limited capital, um, the amount of time you would spend just talking to our procurement processes and our legal teams, you could burn through several months of your very valuable capital just to get through that process. And there's no guarantee that you're going to integrate you into that system. So 
we need to fix that, and we've got people who are working on how to facilitate that at a speed up. Um, Is that a technology thing, a regulatory thing, a, a, a it's part, legacy? It's partly technology. So how do we have the systems that can easily accept things? Can we build on services? Can we make it easy to integrate into banking systems? Or both into and out of HSBC. Um, and part of it is process driven. We're, we're incredibly process driven. So breaking down those barriers is incredibly important to, be able to um, allow the rest of the ecosystem to develop it. it it's developing these technologies to be able to work with us. Um, so you're going to work with, collaborate with startups, right? Yes, is one thing. The one. And, and actually, and, and we now have, um, we've got about a $200 million fund that we've made available to make investments. More than Jack Ma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he only got 100. He, he's got quite a lot of money there. I know, but he, he only gave so, 100. Well, and, and, so, so, which actually then brings us nicely. I want to see how much CY Lang is going to To Ant Financial. So, okay. So, so now you, so, so that's kind of the local uh, uh, scene. That's not everything. But you're a global organization. Are you doing the same in London, the same in Tel Aviv, the same yeah, in. Yeah, we are. You know, is but, it, is it? But, Hong Kong is still, from a retail banking perspective, Hong Kong is still a part of that or of this organisation of HSBC. So if you and again, you can go and look this up on the um, uh, or, uh, on the uh, annual statements. Hong Kong contributes over seventy percent of the profit globally for the retail bank. So everything starts here. This is this is what you have to protect. In this business, we are in this town, we're a community bank. Um, we are a grow and protect organization. So this is not, we can't be a challenge, it's difficult for us to do that. We have a different, we have a, we have a relationship and an expectation with people in Hong Kong that is different to what we have in other markets. That's we. I, I want to know you. Right? So you came from Strawberry Net and you joined this big company. What, what do they want you to do? What's your job? Night, and it's got a great title. Job. What, what do you actually do? Yeah, I know. <laughs> what, what do you actually do? It's quite, I mean, you know, you're with, you sit in that nice building in the central. For the time being. And then you're moving to WeWork. Are you moving to WeWork? Let's talk about that. That's my word. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so you, they bring someone like you in, and I know they've recruited other people from the industry. Sean, you know, from. So, well, what does a guy like you do when you arrive in HSBC to get a part of a tie on? I used to have a, I used to have to wear a tie and strawberry hair. Oh, did you? Yeah, he was a very old school boss, and I actually took it off when I went to HSBC. So, what do I do? I, I, I try and break stuff. Honestly, that's what we do. So, so you come we in. challenge everything. So challenge. You've been, how long have you been at HSBC? Eight months. So what have you broken in eight months? Uh, <laughs> or what have you broken and repaired? <laughs> Hopefully. So we're working on a bunch of stuff that the bank would not have been thinking about eight months ago. And I think that, that's a huge breakthrough. I, 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 can't, I wish I could talk more about it. We'll, we'll talk. We've got a product pipeline that's coming. Um, we'll be able to release something towards the end of the year. But we are challenging everything that they think about. So when our internal compliance teams tell us, you can't do this, we go back and say, we'll show us the regulation, we'll help you re it. So it's about fighting the orthodoxy and the incumbency of the bank. Because if, when you're the biggest, when you are the incumbent, and you open the window and you go, what's going on in FinTech, and nothing seems to be happening, and you're still growing and you've got customers, the impetus to change is in there. Um, so what we go in there and do is try and say, okay, look, first of all, the world is changing and it's going to happen faster than you think it will. Um, and I think that with Alipay, Tencent coming across the border... So it helps, to have, it helps to have scary competitors, right? It does, yeah. So they come into town and then you go, right, we're going to change this. So is there anything, I, and I saw in the media that you were launching a peer to peer, is there anything you tell us about that's coming in? I called your customer service centre and they said, we press 1562 if you want to find out about our new online banking service. I pressed 1562 and I got through to some call centre in the Philippines. Hello sir, how can I help you? I want to find out about your new internet banking. Oh, it's going to change. Good. 
It was like talking to a PR manager. She gave me no answer. Right? She ran around the circle. So, is there anything you can tell us? I mean, I want to hear. I want to hear about something cool that's about to happen that's going to change my whole banking experience. Apart from you know, going to a restaurant and saying, you know, "There's your two hundred dollars." Our job in the short term is to fix all the stuff that should work. So what's coming out towards the end of this year is that we'll be launching new online banking services, new mobile banking services. We've got um, stock trading um, in the pipeline. Um, there's FX pieces coming in next year. But the key actually, is, and those are all great, and those, where we're at today actually is we have this huge job to do which is, like a lot of banks, we've got this massive legacy system that sits there. And we can't get rid of it, it's too difficult. So what we have to do is build on top of that, this kind of middleware layer. Why, why is it so difficult? I mean, if, you, if somebody says, I've got 1.2 billion dollars, can't you go, right, fire, 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 chuck that software out, replace it, uh, and I'm going to bring that in. I don't know what I'm doing for a reason. No, you can't do that. <laughs> They told me that and I wasn't going to put that for it. Okay, and you're a marathon runner, so yeah, I understand so, that. I'm just, I'm just a sprinter, so I'll give up. Uh, so we have to build this middleware there, and on top of that we can build all the services and all, and all the things that a modern business would need to be able to use at speed. So you're conceptually going from, it's all on-premise, and you know, you used to have IT people like Paul, who said, hello, said, uh, you know, we can't let anybody else touch it, to the Microsoft's new, Satya Nadell approach, which is we must open it up and put it on the cloud and get it. We're heading in that direction, okay. absolutely heading in that direction. So we're building our own internal private cloud systems. Um, we're figuring out how to expose services so that third parties can use them. Um, we're figuring out how to use the cloud um, cloud services. Uh, our global head of digital engineering comes from Amazon um, and Amazon Web Services. So, these guys are driving this kind of um, technology advancement for us so that we can create the environments where we can create products and services that we can deliver faster. So when you ask how we change a big organization, a huge part of that is the culture change in the way we work. And frankly, there's a lot of companies that talk the same way that we do. We, got, we, we, we use words like MVP and Agile and all that kind of stuff. Are we perfect at it? No. Are we making quite big strides at being able to deliver that way? Yes, and our velocity and the cadence with which we're able to deliver products is increasing. So we're, we've got certain products, so like our mobile platform. Um, by the middle of next year, we should be quite close to having this idea of DevOps, right? So we will be able to do real-time releases multiple times a day if we need to. So that, that's the huge challenge, and that's where we need to get to, to be able to actually start to do the really cool stuff we want to do. But there's so much to think. You can't, applying for anything online today is still broken. So creating a new busy bang thing over here is interesting for a while until someone needs to do something they really still need to do on the platform. So we still have this huge task ahead of us, which is deliver the products and services in a simple, fast way that people can use. That sounds like a really good long-term thing. Can you tell me, can I get rid of my dongle suit? Yes. Good. Okay. Like to. Um, so to move forward that now, is, is all those resources, are all those resources being built in Hong Kong? No, but a huge amount of them. So, so we are structuring ourselves more